the reason I went into all of that is because you have to deal with bloating differently based on what's causing it. You have to ask why and then how before you can, you know, really find lasting solutions. Hey everyone, welcome to the Nourished and Thriving Show. I'm your host, Katie Lovett. I'm a registered dietitian on a mission to help you increase your impact and legacy on the world while healing your gut and reducing your IBS symptoms. I'm so grateful to have you here. Each week, I'll inspire you to live vibrantly and provide valuable resources and information that empowers you to take bold action towards your health goals. Before we dive in, make sure you follow or subscribe to my show wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Ready? Let's go. Hey guys, hope you guys are having a great week. So if you're watching it, this on my YouTube channel, you can see I have a different background. So the last few weeks I've been having to sit at my husband's desk. We did a whole house shovel, shovel, shuffle. If you follow me on Instagram, you heard about it there, probably like ad nauseum. I finally have my desk set up with like kind of a back, like kind of how it was. So feels good to have my own space. I have way more windows in my new office space, which I love. I'm going to get some plants moved in here and it's going to be awesome. So it feels good to kind of be back in my own space. Today, we're going to be talking about bloating in case you couldn't tell by the podcast episode title. So why are we talking about bloating? Why is it even an issue? This is actually one of the most common complaints I get about GI issues. I feel like it's like the topic that everyone wants to talk about that nobody wants to talk about, if that makes sense. And that is because it comes alongside almost every other digestive challenge. So whether you're struggling with reflux or gas or diarrhea or constipation or even nothing, and you're just dealing with bloating on itself, like it can be by itself or with any of these other situations, it just feels like it's kind of the thing that's always in the room lurking in the shadows or out in the open because it's totally visible to everyone. So it's something that even though a lot of my listeners are struggling with different things, whether it is, you know, the typical gut issues that are different, that sometimes have similar or different causes, whether it's constipation or diarrhea or heartburn or, you know, anything like that. Or even if you are somebody who's just really interested in gut health for your quality of life and longevity, and you know that having a healthy gut is critical to your overall health, bloating can still be an issue with that. So I just feel like it's this big topic that needs to be talked about. So here we are. So I was thinking through, you know, what are some of the things that bloating causes? It can cause some big problems of its own. So first of all, it comes alongside other problems, right? That need to be addressed for optimal function and optimal health, but then it has, it can come with its own problems. So if you're struggling with other things, and then you're also dealing with bloating, you're like double struggling (laughs) because you're having multiple symptoms from different things that are all linked together, but it's just, adding to your problems and your discomfort. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is just the physical pain and discomfort from a swollen belly, right? Like a lot of people with IBS already experience increased sensations of pain from normal digestive processes. So, you know, our bodies, our digestive tracts move food through our digestive tract. That's what it does. And even these normal movements of your intestines called peristalsis, it can feel painful to people whenever they're struggling with IBS. So if this is you and you're experiencing pain and you don't know what it is, it may not be anything wrong, quote unquote. It's just you, it's like your nerves are on fire. You're just experiencing these normal processes as pain. So much less like if you're also bloating and adding additional pressure and tension on those tissues, you're going to have even further increased pain 
through your normal digestive process, which can lead to fear of eating and just like an overall not well being, right? Like just not a great quality of life as you're, you know, kind of afraid of eating and uncomfortable all the time. And you have to eat to live, and you can just see how it cascades into these other issues. And that's just the physical side. Like then there's the emotional and psychological. So embarrassment about how you look, you know, if you look like you're six months pregnant every day, people are asking you when you're due, that's uncomfortable, right? And then discomfort or challenges getting dressed, you know, we all want to look and feel our best. And if your pants are really tight, you know, as the day progresses, like they fit in the morning and then you have, I've had people say like, I have my morning pants, and my evening pants, because my jeans that I put on in the morning literally cannot button them at night. Like I have to put on my stretchy pants or whatever. That's uncomfortable. Right. And it makes you feel not very good about yourself too. And even like insecurity and, you know, not confidence in your body with your partner and and intimacy. And that can be a really big problem in your relationships. So bloating is a really big deal. It may feel minor, like on the surface, like you're not bleeding out or something, but it can cause a lot of disturbances in your life that really have a significant impact on how you are and how you're showing up in the world and the impact that you're making on others and the relationships you have. And that's what this life is all about. So that's, you know, it's significant. It's something that needs to be looked at. So I'm glad to be looking at it with you guys today. So on top of all of that fun stuff, there's so much confusion about what causes this bloating, right? And that creates a whole other level of stress and worry. So how do you fix bloating? How do you fix it? I know like that's the burning question that everyone has. So in typical Katie fashion, we have to ask the question why. So in order to fix the problem, you need to figure out exactly what the problem is so that you know what the right steps are to take it. So you have to kind of figure out what's causing the bloating. Why am I having this bloating to begin with? And know that there's a few different types of bloating and several different causes of bloating and start to explore what might be the cause of yours. So The first type of bloating that we're going to talk about, I'm going to call food, water, and waste bloating. Sounds really cute, doesn't it? So (laughs) food, water, and waste bloating is literally from the food that you are eating and the water that you're drinking and the water that's in your body. And then the waste, you know, as it moves through your GI tract, it's, it can happen like anywhere in your GI tract. And I think that the location is super, super important. And that can be kind of tricky to figure out on your own, but I'm going to just kind of break it down. And as you start to understand where your bloating is happening, we can get a really clear idea of what's causing it. So bear with me for a sec. We're going to break this down. Okay. So if your bloating is happening higher up, So that would be more stomach, small intestine, like top part of your small intestine type of deal. You're probably struggling to break your food down. So you guys, this could get really long. I just realized I'm going to try and do this super high level overview. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to digest. So as you're digesting your food, your stomach needs to be acidic. That kills all of the bad bacteria yada, yada. We know this. I've talked about this on other episodes before. So as your food, which is now called chyme, C-H-Y-M-E, leaves your stomach, enters your small intestine, your small intestine is not set up for that high acidity and it needs to neutralize the acid. So then these basic digestive enzymes are released to neutralize that acidity. And so if you're never having that acidity, from your stomach, if you're struggling with low stomach acid, which is by the way, a bigger cause of reflux and indigestion than too much acid, which is kind of like opposite of what you feel like it should be right. Your other digestive enzymes aren't going to be released. So not enough stomach acid. It doesn't trigger the the release of these other digestive enzymes and your body is not going to have the tools it needs to fully break that food down, which can cause sluggish digestion, take longer, a bigger burden on your digestive tract. And it can actually slow your down your motility 
and cause constipation. So constipation can actually, you know, the cause of it can actually be really early on in your digestion. So that's definitely something to look at. My biggest tip, I'm going to give you guys a quick one because we're like, have a lot to cover. And I I like to keep these episodes short for you guys because I know nobody has time to sit around and listen to an hour long podcast every week, even though I could talk for that long. My biggest tip for this, you guys, I talk about it all the time. I'm like beating it into you, but so many people say they don't do it. And it's something that's that important. Chew your food, chew, 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 30 times, chew 30 times per bite. Be focused when you're eating. Don't be distracted. Take some really nice deep breaths. Prepare your body to receive that meal because you actually release about 20% of your stomach acid before you ever take your first bite of food when you're really ready to eat that meal. And then your stomach is primed and ready to receive that food. And it all rose merrily along from there. So that's upper. Okay. Super quick overview. Go back and re-listen to that if it felt like new information or something that was really applicable to you. Go back and re-listen. You can rewind it. Okay, so then there's more like mid bloating. So this is going to still be like small intestine, but maybe further down into your small intestine. And this is going to be more like a gas bloating situation. So where you are having an overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestine or other organisms like fungus, so or methanogens, so IMO, SIBO, CIFO, those types of deals are in your small intestine and you have bacteria basically that aren't bad, but they're in the wrong place. And whenever these organisms break down food, first of all, they're getting a diet that they shouldn't be getting, right? Because in the small intestine, that is your body's place to further digest your food, break it down, and then absorb those nutrients. So you have these other guys kind of there in the place where they shouldn't be eating the food that they shouldn't eat. It's highly fermentable, meaning these organisms can break it down super quickly and make a ton of gas. So you just blow up like a balloon. If if you are bloating every single day consistently, it's getting worse and worse throughout the day. You look normal in the morning. You look six months pregnant at night. This is something you need to pay attention to. So these organisms are creating gas, which are literally causing you to blow up like a balloon. Okay. And then let's go a little bit lower down into the GI tract. And that is going to be more like most of the time, a constipation type of thing where you're not going to the bathroom regularly. You're having a buildup of waste and water in your large intestine because things aren't moving through like they should be. And things are just getting backed up and you're getting really swollen. So those are kind of like the high, medium, low, like as you're moving through your digestive tract rundown of food, water, waste, bloating, I also touched on gas bloating in there as well. And so then we're going to move into the third main cause of bloating, which is really more of a swelling. And this may not be just limited to your abdomen, to your stomach. It may be kind of everywhere. And this is just general inflammation. So inflammation in general, throughout your whole body, inflammation in your digestive tract specifically, specifically, this could be from food sensitivities that are triggering your immune system in your gut to kind of be on alert. These could be damage to your small intestine, the tight junctions in your small intestine, which cause leaky gut, which allows things to get into your body that should not be there. So your gut's inflamed, your whole body's inflamed because there's these foreign things floating around your blood system and your body doesn't really know what to do with it. So think about an injury, like a sprained ankle. I like that one because I've had a lot of injuries, ankle injuries in my past. And so it's, it's really fresh in my mind and easy to explain. So you sprain your ankle. What happens? You swell fluid rushes to the area to try and protect and cushion and, and bring nutrients and like the whole thing. So whenever you have this just like low grade inflammation throughout your entire body all the time, you're swelling right? Some other stressors could be stress, like psychological and emotional stress, which we've already talked about. Bloating can cause stress, right? So it's this horrible cycle where it's like you're stressed because you're bloating, you're bloating because you're stressed. Like it can really cascade there. So stress, 
illness, latent viruses, latent infections that you're maybe not like obviously sick, but your immune system is still triggered damage to that small intestine. Like we talked about poor diet, environmental toxins, et cetera. So all of those things can just cause generalized inflammation throughout your body or, you know, local inflammation to your gut. And they have to all be addressed. If you're, if you're really looking at bloating, another thing that I didn't mention on the low intestine, sorry, we're going to like backtrack for a sec is another organism issue, which is just an imbalance in your gut. So an imbalance in the organisms living in your large intestine. So you have in the small intestine, things that just shouldn't be there. And then in your large intestine, you can have an imbalance. So like too many of one type, not enough of another type, and it can cause some issues there too. Sorry, had to go back there. I didn't want to leave that one out. So, oh, what do you do with all this information, right? Like let's dig into all of that. But before we do it, if you've been around a while and you've been listening to these episodes and find them helpful, or if you're brand new and really enjoy hearing what I've had to say, I would really appreciate it. If you would leave me a review, a quick couple of sentences about why you love my podcast and leave me a five-star rating. It helps me get my message out to more people. It helps more people get help from what I'm saying and finally find answers to their gut issues, overall health issues, all of that. So hit pause, go do that. And then we'll keep trucking and talk through what you do with all of this information whenever you get back. All right. So unpacking bloating next steps, what do you do with all of this information? So I already said this, but I'm going to say it again, because I know I said a lot. So the reason I went into All of that is because you have to deal with bloating differently based on what's causing it. You have to ask why and then how before you can, you know, really find lasting solutions. So I have a few questions that you can ask yourself because why is a really ambiguous, big, vague question that you probably won't know. Like if you ask yourself why your immediate, like subconscious response will be, I don't know. So I'm going to give you more specific questions to ask yourself to start paying attention to, to see if you can start finding some answers. Okay. So if you are in a place where you can take some notes, jot these questions down. If you're driving, you know, just remember them, think about them while I'm talking, or, you know, you can easily just go listen to the last few minutes of this podcast episode. Again, whenever you get to a place that you can write some notes and jot them down there. Okay. So the first question I want you to ask yourself is how often, right? I've kind of mentioned this, but you need to ask yourself this question. How often are you bloating? Is it every single day or is it just sometimes if it's every single day, are you bloated when you wake up or is it not until you start eating that you see it? Is it getting worse gradually throughout the day? Or is it within, you know, 30 minutes, the first time you eat, you're bloated and it stays that that way the same day, the whole day. So everyone's bloating can look a little bit different. You need to start kind of getting really detailed about what kind of bloating you have. I think everyone assumes that they say bloating and like everyone means the same thing. And yeah, like, I think we all kind of know what bloating means, but it can be caused by a lot of different things. It can look really different for different people. Okay. So if it's just sometimes, can you find any patterns? Like, is it around your cycle? Is it whenever you're stressed? Is it whenever you're not drinking enough water? Is it when you eat certain foods that can be really tricky because it can be delayed by a few days. It can get really hard to find those patterns, but sometimes you can, I actually have a free symptom tracker and interpretation guide that I will send to you. I'm going to put the link in my show notes. You just click on the link, enter your name and email, and I will send you the symptom tracker and interpretation guide. And there's also a training with it that goes into digestive enzymes. It's super, super helpful. So if you've been confused about digestive enzymes, what they're helpful for, it goes hand in hand with this bloating conversation. I think it'll be really helpful for you. The interpretation guide is really key because you can go find a symptom tracker anywhere. You can write down your foods and symptoms on your own. You don't even need a guide or a PDF, but it asks some questions that you may not think to ask yourself, which is really crucial. And then it tells you 
how to find the patterns, what to look for. So it basically walks you step by step. When I look at my clients' food journals and I'm looking for patterns, what I'm looking for. So it basically allows you to have access to my brain as you're looking at that. So super helpful. I'm just going to put the link in the show notes. It'll say like, click here for the symptom tracker (laughs) interpretation. It will keep it really simple. So the next question that I want you to ask yourself is, are there other GI symptoms coming with this bloating or is it on its own? So are you just experiencing bloating and everything else is fine? Or are you also experiencing reflux or indigestion? Or are you also experiencing constipation? Or is the bloating only there when you're constipated? Or are you constipated all the time and the bloating is awful? Or are you having diarrhea and bloating? You know, so what other symptoms are coming with it? And that'll start helping you to kind of pinpoint what's going on. So last, ask some more general lifestyle questions. How well are you supporting your health through the decisions that you're making every single day? What does your diet look like? Are you eating whole foods that are nourishing your own body and also your good tummy bugs? Are you hydrated? Are you stressed out? Are you breathing correctly from your diaphragm where your belly, you know, expands and contracts with each breath so that that massages your digestive tract and helps move things along? Or are you breathing in your shoulders? If you were on YouTube, you just saw my shoulders going up and down, you know, where you're taking super shallow breaths, it's your shoulders are moving up and down and it really is disjointed from your abdomen that can cause bloating. Are you sleeping well? Ask yourself all of those questions and then Pick one thing to start working on one thing at a time, right? We're only human. We can't do all the things at once. Pick one thing, do it consistently. You'll see results, right? When you master that, pick something else. So if you've tried these things, if you've tried to pick one thing, you've tried to pinpoint it, you can't figure it out. It's time to get some help, right? You don't need to suffer with this. There are answers out there. I have a lot of them. This is what I'm really great at doing. I am so good at helping to see patterns and connections that other people can't see. It is like my superpower. I'm really good at that. I stay up on all of the research. I have extensive training and have a ton of experience actually helping people. So I am like the partner that you want as you try to figure this out. So if you want to know more about what it's like to work with me and stop spinning your wheels looking for answers on Dr. Google, trying to figure it out yourself by taking a little of this and a little of that and asking what your cousin's aunt Judy did that helped her click on the link in my show notes that say, watch my program video. And if it feels like a good fit, apply to work with me. So the program video just talks more about who I am, what I do, how I work, totally non-risky. If that feels good, move on to the next step, which is scheduling a free call, submitting an application, I'll review it. If I feel like you're not a good fit for me, I will respond to your email and let you know that and maybe send you another resource of, Hey, you know what? I'm not a great fit for you. Here's somebody who is right. I'm very well connected in our community. And so I would love to help you. Even if it's sending you to somebody who can help you better. If I feel like we are a great fit, we'll hop on a free call and talk more about what getting help might look like for you. You don't have to keep suffering. You don't have to, you know, struggle and wonder and worry and stress. I want you to live your healthiest life so that you are out in the world, making an impact, living out your purpose and, you know, thriving in this beautiful world and enjoying every minute. So that's all. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much for listening to the entire episode. I hope you are feeling inspired and empowered to take bold action towards your health goals. If you enjoy what you heard, don't forget to follow my show so you never miss a new episode. And it would mean the world to me if you left me a review so others knew what to expect from my show. Last, get in touch. Let me know what bold action you're taking. Let me know how you're inspired. Follow me on Instagram at the underscore healthy gut underscore dietitian. I've put a link in my show notes for you so you can simply click and follow. Come say hi. I respond to all my messages and I can't wait to get in touch.